So we're starting, we're opening up this session. My name is Luis Linneo and I'm going to be like the moderator of this talk. Uh, and I'm really happy that you are here. We're expecting about 50 people. So we're kind of half, half of us are here right now. But it's, so I think it's better to start straight away. Uh, so before we start, I just want to know how, how you're feeling right now. So I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a poll with you. Uh, launch a poll, please. Jessica, you have to help me with that too. Yes, if you could all vote once more, it was interrupted. Yes, now we have half. <laughs> yeah, just to know where you are right now. We, are, we, we already had our check-in with the other people. Okay. So yes. I will close the poll now. Uh, yes, uh, two people are happy. No one is stressed. Uh, five are curious. No one is angry. <laughs> Four are excited. One person is hungry, and for now, no one is looking forward for the long weekend. <laughs> okay. If I could, if I could, uh, if I could press on that one, I would do do that after this <laughs> session, of course. Uh, so very nice to to know that you are doing fine uh, and that you're happy and excited. That's what I am too, of course. Uh, so this session is actually one of part of the uh, Ubuntu, the Global Ubuntu Symposium uh, process that we've had since November. And we are, uh, this is a regional uh, Men Engage uh, Europe uh, session. And we are uh, 101 members in our network right now in, in the in European network. And uh, we are really looking forward for this talk with our friends from Denmark and Austria and Albania mainly, but also of course with you too. So you, you can uh, join the conversation, especially the second part, where we're going to be having a, a conversation with all of you. And if you need interpretation, that's really important here. This is where the part where you go down and press into the globe uh, so you can get the interpretation to Spanish and Russian. So, uh, yes, um, this is, this is what, uh, what we can give you here and hope it works for you. Uh, yes, as all of you are muted right now, which is really good. Uh, I think it's good for our uh, panelists to unmute themselves when you're going to talk, of course. I'm going to highlight you some, sometimes too. Uh, what else can I say? This uh, session is like, it's two part session. Like the first part, we're going to have like uh, some kind of introductory to the topic to answer some of those questions that we've talked about, about the backlash and radicalization and how we can work together uh, uh, the strategy is working with young men. Uh, and if you have questions, you can always po put them in the chat and we can try to come back to your questions uh, when, when it's uh, suitable, I guess. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk a bit much more. I, I just want to get into it. So please, uh, I want to, we have four really good speakers here. We have uh, uh, Fatun Taipi from Albania, from Woman to Woman Organization. We have Teresa Schweiger uh, from Poika in Austria. Uh, we have Luke Nielsen from Der Gender in Denmark. And we have Verena Fabris uh, from Extremism Advice Center in Austria. All of you welcome here. And we're going to start with uh, our first um, uh, introducing this, this topic with our organization, member organization, Der Gender and Poika. So uh, I, right now I give the floor to, to you. Luke and Teresa. Uh, I I'm wondering who's going to start. I Somebody give the, the word to Luke. I think you can start. Sure. Let's start with Luke then. He, here we go. No problem. No problem. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Logan Nilsson. Uh, I work for the Danish gender equality organization Dare Gender. Uh, we work broadly with gender equality, but uh, we focus on men and men's. Uh, both inclusion and to find ways for, for men to engage in gender equality and work transformatively uh, with masculinity, notably to uh, prevent uh, violence, which is why the, this conversation is interesting for us and, uh, and also why I'm here today. Um, we've just released this report under influence uh, and I will be uh, talking uh, uh, based on this report. It's about uh, gender chauvinistic spaces, digital spaces in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, Louise, I just have to confirm, uh, do I give a small presentation now or do I just introduce myself? No, it's good that you start with your presentation, please. All right, let me do that. Well, the report uh, 
as I said, try to uh, map out uh, different uh, gender chauvinistic digital spaces in Denmark. Um, and uh, we looked at different uh, YouTube channels, Discord channels, and other places where we saw these uh, these um, uh, communities form. Um, I think the first sort of finding I will highlight uh, from the report and also encourage everyone to do is to uh, is is to uh, get in contact uh, with us and in general contribute more to these localized forms of uh, anal analysis because I think it's important uh, and now I talk especially from a European uh, perspective but also from a global per perspective that we understand these uh, anti-feminist uh, these uh, gender equality backlash trends uh, trends from a very localized point of view um, if I take myself, for example, I, uh, for a long time, I knew more about the incel movement in Canada than I knew about the black umbrella protest in, 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 in Poland. And I mean, Poland is roughly a six hours drive from uh, where I live in Copenhagen. So there really is a need to, uh, to, to share knowledge more across Europe. So if, uh, if you have anything to share, uh, if you're interested in the report, please uh, reach out to me. I will share my, uh, my, um, my email address in the in the comments afterwards. Um, we identified uh, some different uh, affiliations in the report: uh, the Danish Manosphere, ethno-nationalist groups, libertarians, neo-pagans, and traditionalists, uh, and various neo-Nazi gro Nazi groups. And then we looked at the at the at the place of gender and masculinity in various conspiracy communities as well. Um, but just to single one out, I think it's interesting to look at these uh, libertarian uh, anti-feminist spaces because I think it, it illustrates uh, an interesting example of how uh, anti-feminism can, can look like and, and the different uh, forms it, it can take. Um, as you probably all know, libertarianism is in its outset an ideology that emphasizes individual autonomy. So it can appear a bit contradictory that these uh, communities have sexist or misogynist views as sexist and misogynist views by definition is undermining the autonomy of individuals, in this case, women, of course, and, uh, and, uh, and, and gender minorities. Um, but what we found was that these uh, communities were, were increasingly emphasizing that the state is a feminist construct it's a, or a feminine construct. It's a, it's, it's a construct uh, emphasizing care. It's a com construct emphasizing emotions. So for them, the state, which is sort of seen as this ultimate uh, uh, unfreedom, uh, was sort of the manifestation of a feminine hijack of society. So they were arguing simply that by removing the rights of uh, women to, uh, to vote, um, society can become more free. So here we see an, an interesting and very scary example of how these ideologies, how these anti-feminist uh, opinions can form in various communities. And again, and I think that's also what we will be talking about today, how in extremist ideology, anti-feminism, anti-gender ideology plays a very important role, either as a direct uh, object or as a, as a sort of underlying uh, thinking, as we see in, uh, in theories such as the Great Replacement and so on that we can probably talk more in depth about later. Um, I also think that it's uh, interesting to see that what also attracts people to these communities is exactly these more uh, extreme ideas because they, they create good content. What we found from interviews with people who were attracted to these communities were that some of these people had just seen the headlines, you know, feminist gets owned by, or one of these very uh, 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 in, incite, inciting or ex, uh, exciting uh, YouTube headlines. And they clicked on the videos and we know that now how YouTube algorithms can sort of send in, uh, send a person down the rabbit hole. You start clicking on all these exciting uh, videos and you get more and more into this, this silo, this echo chamber. And that's also something we saw. And we saw a need to provide alternatives because contrary, we also talked to people who had sort of entered these communities and escaped again, so to say, or gotten out again by actually seeing different content, seeing alternative views, seeing some of their uh, quote unquote heroes getting challenged. 
So that's something that we have started to work with, but uh, I, I think I will save that uh, to later. Um, of course, we also see that many of these ideas are very masculine ideas, like the libertarians. They would say that the problem about the feminist state or the feminine state is its irrationality, that there's no rationality in the state anymore. anymore. So these rational, rationalistic masculine uh, values are being, are being um, uh, emphasized in these communities, which again attract especially young men maybe young men seeking uh, seeking an identity and here they're giving a, a, a clear one you belong in this category we can create uh, and, and give you a stable identity and so on and so forth but i look forward to discuss this further i will stop here this was just a small uh, teaser and i look forward for uh, for the discussion today or the conversation i keep telling that to myself this is not a discussion of course this is a conversation where we share ideas and i look forward to share ideas with you today thank you Perfect. Thank you very much, Luke. Yeah, it's it's great introduction to this uh, uh, issue. So now I'm going to go to Teresa. Uh, here you go, Teresa. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you very much, Luis. My name is Teresa Steiger. I'm based in Vienna, Austria, and um, uh, I'm head of an organization. That... Oh no! Now we lost you, Teresa. That's so bad. Oh. Okay, now you're back again. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe not. You you were saying before that you could an, have problems with that with yes, your internet. I'm working for an organization um, that is called Poika, and this is not a an Austrian or German word. It is from Finnish, and it's uh, if you translate it to uh, German, it is a boy and a son. At of our organization. And um, we are working with boys and young men uh, between the age of 6 and 18, 19 years old. And our um, main goal is it to um, work with boys and men on uh, issues of uh, masculinities, uh, violence prevention, and um, and some other like life planning or gender sensitive career counseling. Um, and one of the uh, small on um, uh, so called de radicalization and uh, prevention of extremism with young men um, in Austria. So, this uh, were really young men, the age between uh, 13 and 18 years. And we discovered um, that this um, is a topic which is uh, closely connected to um, gender ideologies, to um, ideas about masculinity and also about femininities. And um, uh, for this uh, panel today, I'm very, very happy that um, I uh, could invite our or my uh, very esteemed colleague, Verena Fabris, who is from the Austrian Extremism Prevention Center, because here in Vienna, we have um, uh, a center which is really the expert center for all questions of extremism and also prevention of extremism. And uh, when preparing this uh, panel, we decided um, that uh, I would really uh, like uh, to invite Verena. Thank you also for joining us to give an overview of the Austrian situation because what we also want to discuss are the similarities, but also the differences between the European countries to really understand the phenomena of um, extremism and its different forms and shapes it takes uh, either in Austria, in Germany, in Denmark, Albania, and all um, some other countries. And I'm very happy um, to discuss this uh, or to hear about this also in the panel discussion, how is the situation um, in other European countries and why are these communities attractive? Um, and I'm very happy that Verena could join us today. Thank you very much. I know you're really, really busy. <laughs> you're doing great work and I will hand um, the floor to you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Teresa, for the introduction for the Austrians too. So please welcome. Let me see. I'm going to spotlight Verena here. 
Let's just see where you are. There you are. Okay, welcome, Felina. Thank you, thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Luis. Thank you all for having me here. I'll give you a short overview, um, and I really try to keep it short. <laughs> and if I don't, please, Luis, stop me because sure. I'm also interested in in sharing experiences and and ideas with with all of you. I share my screen. So first, I, I want to tell you a few words about the Extremism Advice Center or Extremism Information Center in Austria. We have been founded in, in 2014, and 2014, you, you all know, was the beginning of the so-called Islamic State. And for many European countries, um, persons left, left for war zones in Syria or Iraq. And in Austria, in comparison to, to the number of inhabitants, quite a lot of people left. And that was the, uh, the political, how to say, the, uh, the course for, for politicians to act. There have been many voices before to install a center like ours. Yeah, but this was a window of, of opportunity, if you, if you want to say so. Um, and um, how the I, I mean the beginning and and still the f focus of, of of politics is on jihadist extremism, but for us it was important from the beginning that we cover all form of uh, extremism. We have a helpline, so you can everyone in Austria can call us for free and anonymous if they have a question on the issue of extremism, if they feel that a person, uh, in, uh, a, this, a child or a pupil or a client, a client might have joined an extremist group. We give workshops and lectures and train trainings. Um, we have reached more than 15,000 people in the last six years. We work together in regional structures, and last but not least, we work together in national and European uh, research projects. So, if you want to know more, and if you you can have a look on our website, it's www.extremismus.it. Uh, I have been asked to give a short. Um, or to, to, to give a notion of how we define extremism in, in Austria. In Austria, we have a national network for prevention and countering violent extremism. Um, several ministries are part of the networks, uh, several uh, Austrian regions and also NGOs like ours. And uh, this, uh, I think it's rather unique in, 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 in Europe but because in many other European countries, there are national coordinators for extremism, and we have a whole network uh, for, for that. And the network sees itself as a strategic committee, a body of experts giving advice to the government. We also de developed a, a, a national strategy to counter extremism in Austria. And for the, for the network, or uh, the, 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 the definition of extremism with, we use uh, in the network, you see it here. It describes a political, religious, or ideological attitude which has arrived at its utmost form. And the aim of uh, extremist groups, extremist ideologists, no, yeah, is to, to completely change the classification system of a society. And then another important point, uh, in order to achieve this goal, they, they use violence. Um, yeah, that's the official um, definition. We as Extremism Advice Center use a slightly different um, uh, definition because uh, we think that the, the aim to completely change the classification system of a society always dispense, depends on the society we live in. Um, I Very often I say that if there have, haven't been radical extremist women more than 100 years ago, I wouldn't be here today and speak to you. 
So we rather um, um, use a definition where we describe elements of extremist ideology, ideologies or uh, extremist groups. And that is a definition that is inspired by Willy Baltholzer. Willy Baltholzer is an Austrian historian, uh, professor for contemporary history. And he has defined right-wing extremism in the early 90s. And by describing elements that characterize extremist ideologies. Ideolo I, I have a really problem with the word ideology uh, in German, <laughs> ideologies. So you see some of the, uh, of, of, of the elements here, I won't um, talk uh, about all of them. What is important for our, our system is uh, that claim to absoluteness, uh, conspiracy theories always are a part of extremist groups. Violence is approved, uh, legitimated, but it's not always, and violence is not the only um, uh, element that is important. And uh, we have heard about it, anti-feminism is, a, is in the most extremist ideologies, uh, it's, it's a, a common point. Also anti-Semitism or homophobia. What we, uh, in, in Austria, what we, what, what currently affects us are conspiracy me myths, like I think everywhere in, in, in the world, they raise also in uh, in, in this uh, situation of, of COVID-19, the pandemic situation we are all in. And on, on our helpline last four months, more than a quarter of people who contacted us, us they spoke about conspiracy myths. A father, a mother, or the husband, or the partner who is believing in some kind of conspiracy theory. And in Austria, there, there are demonstrations on the street and from different people. They are all united by being against the corona regulation measures of the government. And there are many, many right-wing extremist groups uh, very, very active uh, in, in these um, uh, demonstrations. Also in Austria, for example, Kussel, who is a condemned neo-Nazi, um, yes, who who uses also the the how to say the the energy of angry people, frustrated people, to influence them uh, with his right-wing ideology. When we talk about the image of extremists in public debates. What comes to you if you think of a terrorist or an extremist? Just think, think for it with which, with which images come to your mind. We think, uh, or we, we, we see that in the public debate in Austria, I only speak in, from Austria, the media, but also the political debate, extremists are young. They are mostly male. They have a migration background. They are socially disadvantaged. They are violent. They are Islamists. They are jihadists. And in the end, they are terrorists. We all know that's not true. That's only one, uh, one uh, small scale of the picture. But uh, uh, as the, the, the public debate and also the political focus is on these groups, young, male, angry, disadvantaged uh, mig migrants, there are many, many blind spots in, it, in the public debate. In Austria, the, the issue of extremism is mainly uh, discussed as a security issue, not as a social issue, not as an issue of the whole, of whole society. We see it um, right now, today, uh, a new law will be adopted 
a new law following the um, uh, which was uh, created because of the terrorist first jihadist terrorist attack uh, in Austria on 2nd November last year. And there we see that it's really uh, the focus is, is terrorism and not a whole society approach. The focus is also Islamist terrorism and not only Islamist terrorism, but also the so-called um, political Islam. And the answer of the politics is stricter laws. And also, if you if you look at the research, research, especially when we talk about jihadism, not when we talk about right-wing extremism, is focused on terrorism research. So what 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 uh, other other blind spots? What don't we? What, what can't we see? Is other forms of extremism apart from jihadism, right-wing extremism, but also. Uh, um, not only classical neo-Nazism, but also other right-wing extremist groups, uh, Turkish nationalist extremist groups, for example, the Grey Wolves is, a, is a, a topic in Austria. What we also don't see that women in this terrorists or not terrorists in these extremist groups, they are not only victims, but they are very often, or they are often, um, or also perpetrators, and we have to take this into account when we when we deal with extremist groups, extremist ideologies. What we also don't see is the social mainstream. In, in the social mainstream uh, in Austria, but I, I think also in other uh, countries, there are, there are still um, hostility against specific other groups uh, existent in, in mainstream society, hostility against homosexuals, hostility, hostility against Jews, uh, or migrant groups in general, and I think also a problem is that when we are when we talk uh, about extremism as the extremism of the others, the migrants, the people who just joined Austria, which, by the way, very often is not true because they are born in Austria. We we when we talk about violence, for example, violence, male violence against women, we we don't talk anymore about the problem of male violence, but we tend to uh, ethnicize or culturalize the problem of violence when, when we talk about the violence of, I don't know, um, migrant people against uh, uh, women in Austria. And the same thing happens with, with, with conflicts. Um, we discuss cultural conflicts as econ uh, economical conflicts very often as as cultural conflict conflicts and don't see other sides of the pro other points of the of the problem i think i will stop here because uh, i have i've prepared so uh, our um, experiences uh, what makes um, uh, extremist groups attractive, or maybe I just uh, read the, the big lines and then we, hey, we can discuss it in community or all of us. Identity and community is, is one of the first things people find in extremist groups, especially young people find protest, rebellion, maximum of attention in, in Austria, in, 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 in the classroom, if you say Allahu Akbar, all the uh, teachers will uh, give you uh, their attention. Orientation, emotional relief, another, um, another important thing, uh, emotional relief also for, uh, um, in, in a, because you find orientation in a complex, complex world. Ideology, yeah, I skipped th this one. Gender and images, that's what we are talking about today. It's not only um, uh, attractive for, for men, for men it's, it's attractive than the, the notion of, of uh, hyper-masculinity, the promise to be a real man, uh, the promise to, 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 of being a hero, hero, but also for women. They're, they're, it can be attractive uh, to be a real 
woman, not having to deal with multiple expectations, not having to be a mother, being successful in the job, and uh, have have yeah many other roles, but just being uh, tr tradition uh, win their their notion is to win back the traditional role as as a woman. And uh, I, I think it has already been said today, the promise is all the clarity to, to, to the own uh, gender role, which may be attract attractive in a, in a world where, where especially young people have to face uh, multiple offers of, of, uh, of finding uh, their own identity. Okay, I stop it here. Okay, hey, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Rina. And um, uh, so we will have this as a, as a part of our discussion too. Uh, and now I would like to present Fatun Taipi from Woman to Woman, please. And you have a small uh, presentation as well, Fatun. Yes, welcome, yes. welcome here. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Fatun. Fatian Taipe, I work at Women to Women organization and I'm part of uh, ZDB office. ZDB office means office for men and boys. Uh, Women to Women organization has started to work with the gender equality and the domestic violence 20 years ago, but only six years ago here in Shkodra, Shkodra city. Uh, was burned the ZDB because the woman to woman organization has noticed that not the domestic violence and the gender equality always needs that men and boys to be part of this cause because it's not just a, a work with just a work it's, it's not only part of a women's and girls work so uh, ZDB has burned in this in this idea and we work in two lines first line is just counseling in our office the perpetrators most most of the perpetrators are referred by the court is the first the first step of uh, counseling them and if they uh, use again violence they can go to the prison uh, other legal uh, treatment of the domestic violence and the second line is uh, the prevention work that we do with the uh, pupils at high schools at age 14 to 18 uh, maybe after the this short presentation I can I can talk more about the prevention strategies that we use and that we do but uh, first of all, we need to know the context of Albania because I think it's a little different from the other states of Europe because we have three three scales of our state. The the first the first scale or the the first the first law of our state is uh, when we win the independence from the Ottoman Empire and. The second uh, phase of our state is during the communism, and the third stage. The, the third stage is this uh, democratic and pluralistic uh, state that we have now. But all these floors of our state has problems about the gender equality and about the extremism that males and boys use against women and this is the uh, for me that i work in this field is a very big problem uh, because because most most of the problem is is a cultural and about patriarchal system but sometimes uh, it's a problem of don't using and don't uh, going according to the rules and to the laws if, for example Albania is the fourth state in the world that has ratified the Istanbul Convention. But we have lots of problems uh, uh, accepting and making laws in the line of Istanbul Convention. Uh, 
Uh, and so uh, maybe I, I will talk later about the, the, the strategies, but this is the, the first presentation and to, to show to show the problems and the, uh, the difficulties that Albania has in these in this, uh, years about domestic violence, violent extremism, and the, the late, the nowadays we have problems with the radicalization, religious radicalization, and the link between the, the gender-based violence and religious radicalization. Radicalization. Hmm. Luis, yes, great. But maybe if you you can share your your two slides about the yes, yeah, I can, I can, I can share that. And I can about the situation in Albania, exactly. Absolutely. Yes. So after this, uh, after this um, presentation, okay. we'll also have a short break, like five minutes, and then we'll get into the into the um, discussion and if you have any more questions i see some, a couple of questions here already but if you have any you are welcome to join and, and uh, ask those questions to our panelists yes I, I can i can go a little in deep now yeah you, you can tell us about about this situation of Bain. yes please yes yes uh, as i said before Albania before uh, 1945 years it was it was a, a monarchy but most of the society was affected from patriarchy uh, women don't have the right to to be elected in public offices uh, the the forced marriages are used everywhere in Albania but after the communism came they had a new idea of creating a new man and the women or we are part of this strategy to maybe to to go against the the old uh, laws that Albanian society has had before. But this uh, new idea of the communism, of creating new new man and woman to be part of this new man, uh, falls in massive uh, population because not uh, because the the massive population doesn't accept this idea and after 90s when the uh, albania was in dem democratic processes most of the problems that we have was that the society comes back to the old rules and i will tell you uh, uh, just just a story that it was to, to understand how deep is the patriarchal system in, in Albania. Uh, in, especially for the northern, northern Albanian region. It was, it was a tradition. A bullet from the father or brother was inserted into bride's dowry. Such a bullet, some, such a bullet symbolically mean that the man of the bridge tribe gave the husband and the men of his tribe the right to kill their daughter if she betrayed the crown or dis disrespect their husband. I, I don't know if you, was, if you were informed about this tradition, but this tradition was before two or three generations before me. So it's not so, so, so far away from, from now. And if you see in the, the screen, we have, a, we have a big problem. In 2019, 32.5 women report violence against them from family. And the age of these uh, victims of violence are 25 to 34. So the, the age of the uh, women and girls that uh, suffer domestic violence and, and gender-based violence are, are new age. So it's not a problem of the old ages, but it's a, it's a actually a problem. This is the, 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 how can I say, this is the, the, the problem that we have to, to study, to understand, and to, in, to uh, intervene to make some changes. But these changes always come with different uh, difficulties. For example, uh, when we work with the young boys of the schools, in the beginning of, of uh, training cycle, uh, 
in workshops. We, we make uh, seven workshops with a group of uh, youngsters from high schools that were selected before from the psychologist of schools. In the beginning of, of the training cycle, we, we make a questionnaire and only 0.7% of them shows that they use violence against girls in the school and the family, family female members. But when we finish the cycle of workshops, 60% of them says that we have used before violence against girls and women. But it's, it's very interesting to, to, to add something, something else. For example, it's a big difference between adults and adolescents and young men in uh, using the violence. For example, to adults, no evidence of religious impact on their attitudes. But now, nowadays, boys and youngsters, uh, especially the boys and the youngsters who came back from the uh, asylum in European countries, show religious, uh, religious, they argue with the religious demands, the violence that they use against girls and women here in Albania. It was maybe it, I was a little because maybe I have problems with my English. But if you have any question to to clear something or to to understand better something, please make feel free to make questions. Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, uh, thank you, Fatian. No, I, I think we, we got it. So, so what you meant is that before the program that you make with the, this uh, this young man, they, uh, I mean, it shows that after your program that they've actually, it's not like they've used more violence <laughs> while you're having a program, but they've actually learned what violence is. So they, yes. uh, so they, they, they learn and they understand uh, the behaviors, their behaviors, their attitudes that they before didn't notice that that it was uh, a violence. Mm, exactly. So uh, this can clarify the, the deep uh, impact that patriarchalism has here in Albania. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very good image that, that you get, uh, give there. Thank you, thank you, Fatian, for this. So, uh, yeah, we do have a couple of, like 10 minutes for some questions before we have a break. You can stop sharing if you want to. Uh, I have, uh, I have uh, Armela. Armela, you want to you wanna say something? Please go ahead. You're also from Albania? Yeah, thank you very much. Actually, I'm for X for Society. Thank you, Fatian, for uh, the discussion that you got it because me and uh, the Fatian that represent the center in Skodra, we are working actually for the same thing and we are dealing with the men and boys. Uh, in, uh, actually, my center is working in Tirana, but we are spread now in 10 cities more. And actually, one uh, uh, um, uh, um, NGO there in Skodra is doing the same uh, thing. Uh, what I wanted to mention is that I got to some couple of questions related to the communication, actually, that uh, Fation done. Maybe, Fation, you can add something more. Uh, we have the law, uh, Daniel, thank you, but uh, wrote this question. We have the law in Albania. Now it's more, let's say, secure for, some, for the women. Actually, but it's not that it's very good and uh, very well respected because sometimes the women are um, uh, obstructed from the men and they don't want to put them, let's say, uh, to the court or to the prosecutors, you know, because sometimes they are facing and uh, like regarding for the law, for the kids, for the, the family, you know, and they are... Uh, not going to the end of this and for this reason sometimes the law is not functioning but in any case uh, when um, uh, it's happening that the police or the prosecutors know regarding the gender-based violence for sure their law is very very high respected regarding this um, uh, uh, gender-based violence because even the uh, deputies you know, the women deputies that are in the parliament they are very very strong supporter of this law and they are going uh, uh, to, um, let's say, to respect this law. The second question, the first actually, was done uh, uh, by um, uh, Nilar, that why is the 25 and 34 ages face more in gender-based violence? 
it's like this is statistically, you know, it's like um, uh, a percent that they get like um, um, uh, statistically, but doesn't mean that it's not in the youngsters uh, or even in the high level. We know with Fatian, two of us, we know that just for three days, um, uh, a woman was uh, killed by his, uh, um, let's say, his um Partner. Uh, let's say, yeah, partners, actually, yeah, sorry. And uh, do you know, he killed him, uh, her, in front of the uh, court. And for us was, uh, uh, let's say, uh, for us that we are working on the gender-based violence, this is a shocked problem, you know, that, and he, they were in the, let's say, in the medium age, 15 to 55, you know, and, but those are data that we are getting from Instat sometimes and from the courts and from the prosecutors. But the average is 25 to 35. We uh, even Fatian cashed a little bit that this is a new age that are dealing more with the violence because if we are coming back and going to our parents, they don't know violence, you know, they respect each other. But the new generation, I don't know how it, how it came, but are a lot of problems. Actually, the immigration is one of them because they are leaving the women here in Albania and the men are traveling to emigrate and sometimes are misunderstandings. And other things is that uh, the families are living in the patriarchal family. They are not living with the kids. Let's say a family for four persons are living with the parents, with the cousins, you know, with the brothers, with the mothers. And this causes a lot of problems. Economic issue is one of the problems that we have it, you know, and as low they are in the economic level, more is the, um, let's say, gender-based violence problems here. The uh, education also is... Of it's course, a, they are all part of components that uh, are focused on the gender-based violence, even that we are working a lot and, uh, let's say, training a lot of youngsters and not doing workshops, communication with the schools. And let's say we have a reference line, you know, when you need, when you have gender-based violence, you need to go to this office and to share the problem and to help the people. But this is something that most of the people are not dealing with these lines, you know, to help and to ask for help. That's the main problem, actually, that we have it. Uh, it's another question, workshops with the religious organization, it is possible. Uh, gender equality is a long process to be realized in most of the country. Actually, um, uh, we don't have too much religion organization that are dealing with the gender-based violence, actually, because we are a country that we have a lot of religions inside. We have Muslim, Orthodox, Catholic, Bakhtashi, and um, uh, other religions. We are living all together, but it's not that the people are not believers too much, you know, because during the communism, we got zero religions. We were atheists. And last for these three, uh, 30, this three, uh, 30 three years decades. that we are after the communism is that we are learning a little bit to be a little bit religious, but that's the problem, actually. You know, we are mixed population. We are all married with each other. Doesn't mean that when you are orthodox is not gender violence or if you are Muslim is not gender violence. That this is a problem in all our community, actually. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Armela. Thank you, Armela. Yeah, well, so we can uh, you can describe the situation in Albania. That thank you very much for that. So we have a we have you could say we have uh, two different pictures: one from Austria more and one from uh, Albania. And I guess we're going to have, we also had some, something from the Danish uh, perspective as well. And this is where we're going to go uh, deeper into. I mean, we're going we're gonna to focus in the next part. And we're going to have a small, a short break now because we got a lot of information we have to. <laughs> so uh, I encourage you to take a short break, like five minutes. Uh, and after that, we will concentrate. We'll have the panel. We'll concentrate on those two specific questions that we raised before why those um, uh, uh, communities which are anti-feminist, misogynistic, why are they attractive? We already touched upon that, but we can do a bit more. And then the main question is how, how can we work and what do we do with our experience of, of uh, prevention work and, and uh, successful prevention work to, uh, that we want to highlight and discuss with all of you. 
so this is what what's ahead of us now. So I'm I'm uh, proposing no even even seven minutes you can have now. So uh, five past one, I want you to be back here and we will have the discussion. And if you have any more questions, please pose them in the in the chat here. And you're welcome to to to, to pose them uh, uh, to our panelists as well. So we'll see you in like six minutes or something. Okay, see you soon. So yes, it's five past. I hope you had a good break. Um, get got some tea, coffee, or whatever you needed for the break. Uh, so now we have about 50, 50 minutes, 55 minutes to, to talk about the, those uh, the two main questions that we had. Uh, so I would, I would like, firstly, I would like to ask you if you, want, if, if you have anything to add on the first question about uh, what, what the communities uh, uh, who are misogynistic and anti-feminist and extremist and radicalized, uh, what they have uh, uh, that's attractive for the, for the young people or for the young men, I guess. I mean, we've we've heard we've heard you kind of covered all of the the different uh, uh, I mean different kind of uh, uh, what do you call it communities that that there are uh, both from from the extremist right, Islamists, uh, uh, like um, um, libertarian, all, all almost and and conservative, and then of course the the, the old conservative. Uh, uh, groups as well, uh, like uh, religious ones and so on. Uh, but uh, so so so, can you? Does does anyone of you wants to add something to to the to that picture of why it's why those communities are attractive for some young people that we haven't said yet? Any anybody? Yes, please, Teresa. Um, what came to my mind uh, during the presentations, and I think um, it is a very important question is, and this is why I also asked Verena, what do you uh, call extremism or an extremist person? Because of course, um, uh, when we talk, for example, about violent men, uh, yes, this could be a form of extremism, but not everybody who uses extremist in a form of uh, an ideology. Or at least I, I think this is something that should be differentiated. And this came to my mind during the presentation, especially from Albania. Uh, how then um, could you label um, or, or how can you uh, talk about this? I mean, you can be a perpetrator uh, and anti-feminist without being an extremist. But somehow it seems to be connected that if you're an extremist, you have some at least uh, very uh, clear gender roles. And I think this is uh, maybe also important in the discussion about um, uh, extremism and male violence uh, or also female violence. So I also thank you, Verena, that you highlighted also the role of women, uh, because I think this is also very important, because if there would not be any women then in the extremist groups, then they also would be less attractive. But these are just some additional thoughts about also how do you talk about uh, the phenomena so that you can um, really see what they are. And of course, they are interconnected and very complex. But if I look at Austrian society, and then, um, yes, you could say that if someone is um, Catholic in a traditional sense, that this could be an extremist position if it is connected with homophobia but I still think it is different than if you go into an uh, extremist uh, society or community which uses uh, violence and this uh, just just came to my mind then also how can we talk about gender-based violence in general sure yes just an yeah, I, yeah exactly so I guess it's like different uh, different types of violence different levels of violence and so on but I mean they have they have other things in common, but there's there was actually a question for you, I think, Virena from from uh, Nila and on uh, she she was asking uh, Nila was asking about how women became pe perpetrators and why. If you have uh, some kind of uh, answer for that, in yeah. in the in the um, yeah in the area which you were discussing. Uh, yeah. For, first, I wanted to 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 say that thank you, Teresa, for 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 
your input, but, but like because I ha have been asking myself the, the same questions. Are we talking about male violence against women? Are we talking about domestic violence? Are we talking about patriarchy? Or are we talking about specific extremist groups where violence against women or anti-feminism is one of many other uh, um, things that in their their ideology, mm. or many one of many other uh, other points. So I'm I'm a little bit confused, I think, because Albania was more about the situation of women and domestic violence or gender-based violence. And I tried to focus on, uh, on extremist groups with uh, an ideology, which is, um, how, how do you say, which is not mainstream ideology. Yeah, I mean, patriarchy is, is mainstream everywhere, in the, not everywhere. There are some uh, spots in the, in the world, I think, where it's different, but still it's, the, it's, in, it's in mainstream society. So, yeah, but to come back to, to the question, um, extremist groups, they, they, they offer many different roles for, for, for women. Uh, I mean, it's first the traditional roles as nurses, doctors, for example, also in, in, in the so-called Islamic State, Daesh, and then also uh, relationship work, it's also a more traditional role, schools, kindergarten, and so on, but they play very important roles in, in, in these parts. But then also propaganda, fundraising, public relations, participation in, 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 in demonstrations. Uh, their women play very different roles than they are, Organizers, they they organize renting rooms, their rooms for events. They they uh, operate information stands and so on. They distribute leaflets. That's also roles for women. And then what is important? They're also doing a great work in recruiting uh, other women, especially other women, but also doing missionary work. And we we can't forget that the uh, we have to see that also play, even if, if the ideology behind is anti-feminist and if there are clear roles for men and women, men in the society, women at home with the children and so on, but they do play central roles as leaders. Look as look at right-wing extremist parties in Europe, uh, look at Marie Le Pen in France, but also um, really extremist terrorist uh, groups, Beate Cepe in Germany, for example. So also the extremist groups, they had to, they had, I think they had to change their, uh, their notion of, of, of women to, to still be attractive and in a society where the gender roles are not so clear a, anymore. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, they also, they are also women fighters mm -hmm. and women terrorists. And not only suicide bombers, that's a special role for women in many terrorist groups, uh, but yeah. So there, there are many different roles for women and there are ma many different gender specific uh, reasons also why women join extremist group, groups. And I think one, when, 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 we, when we are talking about gender based violence, one, uh, re one reason amongst many others, because it's also always very complex, is uh, that women who have ex experienced violence, male violence in an extremist group, uh, they they seek protection as well, and and sometimes they really are protected or feel protected, and it also it is also kind of in a, in a if you see it in a psychological way an escape from reality. Mm. Then also women who women like men who have experienced uh, uh, racist or have have racist experiences, for example, as a Muslim woman, um, they can can. They're in, in a jihadi group, they can live as the real Islam. Hmm. And what I think is very interesting when we talk about patriarchy, there are women who told us, and we know it also from, from research, uh, that for some women being part in, a, in, a, in, a, in an extremist group, like let's speak of a jihadi group, for example, um, for them it's 
even kind for themselves in their own notion, a kind of emancipation from patriarchal family structures, structures because in, in jihadi groups, also men, they don't can't, they, they have clear rules. And at home, maybe the, uh, my brother is allowed to go out till 11 in the evening and drink alcohol and I have to stay at home. And if I am a, in a jihadi group, both genders have very strict, many, many, many restrictions. Mm. And also some young uh, women, uh, and I know this not only from jihadi group, but also, for example, from uh, Christian fundamentalistic groups, they they feel freed from uh, this uh, diverse gender expectations women have today in, in our, Euro I say European societies, but uh, the role of being, uh, not only being a woman and, and taking care of other people and, and, and the household and so on, but we also have to be, have to have a job, be <laughs> successful in the job. We have to be beautiful. We have to be sexual attractive to everyone. And if I am in this group, I know I know my gender roles, and God will find a man for me. I don't have to <laughs> be beautiful and sexy, and 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 so on. And for yeah, okay. So so they, they, there's also this what what's the for for on the other side for men the the, the attraction of having a clear uh, gender role model. Um, may be attractive for for women uh, mm -hmm. on the on the other side. So, okay. yes, to liberate uh, themselves from neoliberal double and triple burdens women yeah. face in in in, yeah. in 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 society. It's it's the kind of simpler way of living or whatever. You you offered some something more easy to 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 get into your system, I guess, in a way. Uh, can I ask you, Fatian, uh, yes. it was raised uh, uh, as well, like, uh, how do you see those uh, links between uh, the, uh, the, the people that you work with, uh, uh, with um, gender-based violence in one hand and extremist uh, radicalized groups on the other hand? Can, how, what, what are the yes. links there? I, I mentioned it before, mm -hmm. but now it's, it's the time to, to go deep. Yes. Uh, Albania nowadays it's... Uh, Lots of people going to to seek asylum, to, to search for asylum in European countries, yeah. and most of them came back again because they don't profit this uh, asylum for one reason or another reason. And when they came back, uh, also the 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 children of their families comes back to the school, and we notice that these uh, boys who came back from the asylum, they are more uh, radicalized than they have gone from, from Albania. And the link between uh, radicalization and uh, uh, gender-based violence is here, because now these boys, they are not protecting their ideas of gender-based radicalization. They are not uh, protecting this idea from the patriarchy systems, but they they protect their ideas now from the religion. And that is a problem because in Albania, the religion is, is free and uh, we have a good harmony and we are very tolerant about the religion's communities. But the people who came back from the asylum, maybe they can, can make new, new friendship with the other uh, nation, national countries, for example, from Syria, maybe Iraq, Etc. But when they came back, they argue that their attitudes against girls came from the religion now. Now it's not my attitude coming from my family or from my patriarchal system, but the religion says uh, that the girls don't go to school, the girls don't have to, to go out, yeah. and etc. This is the, the link that we are uh, challenging now. Sure. So what you mean where, where, where some of the young, young men go to the Western countries to seek asylum, they kind of get radicalized in the, the other Western societies, like it could be like in England or Germany yes, or Sweden. Especially from England, but also France yeah. and other states. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know what happened to the to the camps of asylum. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but when the the boys and especially all the all the family comes back, they are more radicalized mm -hmm. and they uh, show their new behaviors mm -hmm. to the city, to the place when they came back. Yeah. That it's not the same behavior and there are not the same attitudes that they had before. Okay. I understand, I understand. Okay, that's uh, really interesting. Thank you very much, Fatian. Okay, I'll go, I'll go now to Luke. Luke, now you've heard a lot. You, you kind of started the discussion and you've heard everything. Do you, do you want to add something to this, uh, to this first question about the attractiveness of those different groups and so on? Is yes, it, of course. Um, uh, I, I will start at a different place because there's so much to comment on and it's difficult sure. not to comment on it. Exactly. Uh, so this link between extremism and, and gender, I'll try to zoom back a bit, a bit because I think it's, it's very interesting and also in relation to some of the questions that uh, have been asked so far. So in the report we wrote and the way I understand Danish authority work, the question of extremism, uh, we emphasize uh, justification of violence and justification of uh, sort of anti-democratic sentiments or attitudes as a measurement of extremism. Because I agree with uh, my Austrian colleagues that to say that uh, transformative ideas in themselves are extremist is of course uh, a, a, a weird way to go, especially when you do uh, feminist uh, work. But um, but then going back to gender, what does that mean for gender? What does that mean for the place of gender and extremism? Um, and as I see it, it means how is gender used to justify, to motivate, or to sort of organize uh, violence and anti-democratic be behavior? Uh, I gave the example with the, with the libertarians before, but we also see it. Uh, and here there is, of course, a tie to, uh, to, to gender-based violence. And so we see how extremist groups justify different types of oppression, different types of totalitarianism, different worldviews based on their uh, perception on especially the gender equality debate in, uh, in let's say in Scandinavia, let's say in, in, in Europe, let's say globally, um, and, and, and how that ties in, into that. So that's the first thing. The other thing is I think gender is just a very useful uh, tool when analyzing extremist groups. So this question about why do uh, women become perpetrators in extremist groups. Well, I guess my original, uh, my original idea would be to say the same reasons as men. There, there are really no differences because, uh, because uh, you want to support the cause, you want to do what you, you can do and so on. But then we have gender as a significant sort of analytical category or instrument or whatever we want to call it that makes the space you can move in, the space you can act in, the whole sort of performativity of being an extremist different because different gender, different organizations will, will interpret gender differently, and that would allow that will allow a different space for what you can do. And I think, from the Austrian side, we were giving a lot of good examples of how that can look like. Can you become a warrior? Can you become a cook? Can you become this thing or that thing? That is actually often, I would argue, determined by the view that organization has on gender. So gender can tell us a lot about, about uh, an organization's self-understanding. Um, so, and as has always been said, that's one of the things that makes these groups very attractive to some people. They offer these simple explanations on gender. And gender is one of the first places we meet the world. When we ask ourselves, how do I become a good person? Consciously, we often say, how do I become a good person as sort of this universal category? But often it's interpreted as, how do I become a good man or a good woman? And that again is interpreted into how do I become a good Muslim man, Christian man, right-wing man, uh, whatever, or woman. Um, and that's why it's so uh, important to focus on gender, because when these simple explanations are, are offered, you give people a sense of comfort, a sense of security, a sense of well-being. Many of these groups uh, uh, can offer places where especially young men can go and perhaps Feel they have a different space to be in, a different space to talk to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, what you call express themselves in, where they don't, they, they're not, they don't um, uh, feel any condemnation or anything like that. And they use the, these groups, they use gender as this active way of getting people in. So gender sort of become the first place you, 
you uh, you you meet these extremist groups, and then sometimes you you get attracted to uh, to more extreme things, or not necessarily more extreme things, but other forms of extremism like racism, totalitarianism, anti-Semitism, and so on. Another thing that we uh, that that we have at least have experienced is that in many of the in many of the gender extremist spaces in Denmark, one thing that we find in common is um, the idea of self improvement as a very uh, fundamental idea that uh, the same group will share uh, evidence of uh, white genocide and different uh, fitness instructions and how you have a healthy diet and so on. And that's a very key key point, I think, that many of these groups emphasize self-improvement. Again, it's about the simple uh, explanations, the simple life, that they, they offer you an alternative to whatever situation you're in, which is often you know, a personal, personally bad uh, situation and so on. And they offer these alternatives. Um, and they offer them through uh, hyper-masculine categories or uh, through, as someone is writing in the, in the, in the chat I see, through reinforcing these gender binary stereotypes, um, which again plays into these very simple, uh, simple uh, uh, narratives about who you are, who you can be, what you can do, and which sometimes offer a contrast to uh, to a society that is patriarchal uh, in, in 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 history and in nature, but with, which has um, uh, gone to some new places. At least I'm talking very much from the Scandinavian perspective, of course. That was my two cents. It's, uh, uh, what a great two cents. Thank you very much, Luke. Uh, so I, I think we also have some people in the audience that want to comment. Uh, so before we go to the next uh, uh, to the next question, uh, I would like to invite, let me see, was it Alexander maybe? Yes, I think it was Alexander. Please, Alexander, do you have a comment, something on this you wanted to share with us? Uh, hello to all. Um, I'm also from Austria, colleague from Verena. Um, yeah, it, uh, Verena just said it um, in, in front of my comment here. Um, that, that is always uh, patriarchy. It, it, extremist groups can always give um, some, some kind of, like Luke said, um, some kind of, of, of structure for people who are coming new in the country. And so this is very attractive for all um, kind of gender. That, that's important only to. To, to nominate this again because um, it can reduce the complexity of the world and so and gender like and what I think is very interesting what uh, Loki said um, that gender is the main thing we can see it's the main thing we can um, if the direction on it it's the main thing we can articulate and so this is also a thing why, because extremism groups are working with the role of gender, because you can see gender, you can see gender on our everyday life. And so um, this is one, one point to work with it. So, yeah. But the rest of it just was said by Verena and Loki. So sure. thank you at all. And we just, we just left, you want to join us here. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's, I think, I think it's time for us to move on to the, to the main question, I would say. Because I'm like I I, I want to know how we're gonna change this. How can we? How can we? Um, uh, yeah. How can? What can we do to to change this and in positive ways? And I see some some idea. I already have some ideas uh, after what you said. But I would like uh, to open the floor for you to to tell me uh, to tell us uh, of good experience on on preventive work with this. Uh, so if we can get into into this in the last half hour, it would be great. Uh, Yes, please. So, anybody who wants to start with uh, some some uh, some uh, some example, maybe or, or uh, some idea on how to uh, how to work, how to ch challenge this. Can I start? Yes, please, Fatin. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As I said before, th this is a matter of uh, understanding and uh, the interest that individual, but and the groups has. To be to be involved and to be participate in this in this uh, way of reacting to the, to the other group. And the problem is that this voice or these groups of of uh, people don't understand well the role of the others and the position of the the, the other and the. The work that we do with the youngsters is is focused on education, 
I think that the best strategy to, <coughs> to prevent the radicalizing and the, the gender-based violence and whatever is education, uh, mostly in the, the first uh, early years of, of the school. So uh, we, with these boys that shows these uh, new attitudes, we use recreational groups when we mix these boys with other boys and make uh, activities, sportive activities and recreational activities to understand each other and they to, to, to be, to, to discuss, to, to make conversation between each other so they can change and they, they can understand their, their position and to understand the, the part of the others now. Mm -hmm. But we have we have a big challenge to to integrate these these modules or these workshops in the curriculum uh, in the state curriculum of, of schools because the schools has a, a curricula and this is a little rigid only some hours and some some lessons are involved the the, the theme of extremism or gender based violence so the big challenge is how can we integrate the, the discussion and the education of gender-based violence, gender roles, the, the violent extremism, the, the religious radicalization to the curricula of school, because not all, all the pupils can be in touch with some programs that NGOs offer. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. So, so, uh, so you would say. So, as I interpret you, it's it's that uh, uh, you mean you mean you have to start early in school, and and uh, it would be good if it was part of a curriculum to to talk about gender roles in in general, but also about violence. I would say uh, so. That would be a, a a good preventive way of uh, of doing it. Okay. Yeah. We we have a we have a data. For example, we have uh, six years that we work with young boys. And none of them that participated to the to, to these uh, workshops uh, was referred from the court or maybe prohibition office for the problems that they showed in the late late life or the late activities. Uh, we have to remember that these boys are referred to us from the school psychologist because mm -hmm. they shown before some behaviors or aggressive behaviors to the school and after the the workshops no none of them come back to to us from the other institutions okay. and this is this is a very promising data because if we multiply this intervention or other intervention to the schools will help to to prevent will help to prevent the radicalization and the uh, gender-based violence and yeah yeah that sounds really nice to hear that you have that's such a good uh, results uh, but in, in numbers there are not lots of boys so yeah i understand but we i mean very limited to our intervention we are just yeah. an organization yeah, but that's how everything starts small and then we go big after that yeah <laughs> that's good that's great to eat Fatian. so okay uh, um the luke or teresa or verena do you have anything any any comments on that one or anything else? I mean, anything to add on what's, what can be successful uh, work, uh, prevention work? What do you say, Verena? Yes. Tell us. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I think education is important, but education alone will not solve the problem. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you a little bit about our prevention principles, how we work. I yeah. mean, our origin is the uh, open youth work uh, that doesn't exist in all uh, other countries. I think Denmark it does exist, Germany, Albania, I don't know. So it's uh, open youth work is youth work outside of institutions like, uh, like schools, for example. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, our first principle in prevention work is always to, to have a critical approach on, uh, on, on, uh, on notion of femininity, masculinity, but also extremism, jihadism, and so on. And also to 
uh, constantly reflect uh, your own standpoint and your own stereotypes. We all have stereotypes and prejudices and you have to reflect them before you can work with other people to help to overcome their own prejudices. Sure. And so that's, that's the first principle. And another principle, if you work with, especially if you work with, with people who are radicalized uh, or or we, we think that they're radicalized is uh, always see the person behind. Don't judge on, on persons, judge on attitudes, but respect and appreciate young people regardless of their views and, 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 and their behavior. I think that's mm -hmm. really important. Third mm -hmm. point is be in the real world of young people. We meaning uh, have a professional, professional knowledge on issues which attract interest young people. Um, know what, what they watch uh, on, on, on YouTube, for example, <laughs> which kind of music they, 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 they listen to. And then I think it's also important to, to have uh, uh, own, clear, uh, own clear and political position and also tell them to young people. Not also, yeah. And, and then what we do when we work with um, so-called radicalized people, what we try first is to, to, to get to know what, what were the reasons for them personally that they have joined an extremist groups. And we have the, the experiences, the people who join extremist groups for themselves, it, it has a, a function in their system. Mm -hmm. They feel stronger, they feel better, they, they, they know what, where, what is right, what is wrong. So, and so it, it doesn't make sense to tell them, oh, you're ideological, what you think is, is um, crap, for example. <laughs> you have to go uh, to the underlying needs of, of, of this person. And then what we try is to 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 find alternative ways of being empowered, of of feeling useful as young man, as a, as as a young woman. And last point I want to mention is when we well, because well, the main focus today is gender roles, help young people to cope with 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 expectations on their gender role, but also show them that there are more genders than women and men. And uh, I don't mean only homosexuals or transsexuals, but also non-binary and so on. And, and if so, it, it can help, help young people to cope with the uh, uh, gender vertigo. So be feeling not, not, not being clear, but uh, their own gender if they have different role models. Mm -hmm. Great, you gave us a lot of uh, good leads there. So, uh, but what I see, it's like uh, so. It could be in educational in school, but you uh, you you try to to focus on the the work outside school, like um, in the in the free time. I would say, uh, and with different ways, like non judgmental way of talking with people and critical. It, it's both. It yeah. can happen yeah. in school, but there yeah. are many, it has to happen in school, in family, in. Uh, youth work institutions in I don't know everywhere in society. For sure. So school right. cannot solve the problem, and education cannot solve solve the problem. Uh, especially that I mean, if it's a traditional view of education, having knowledge. Mm -hmm. If it's emotional education, I'm I'm uh, with with. Uh, fat young yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so because yeah. Ma many of the causes why people join extremist groups they are not rational they are not uh, but they are there are emotional needs behind it and it's yeah. not always a cognitive decision yeah sometimes it is especially when you become a leader or if you earn money and so on or if you are a politician and want to uh, <laughs> gain votes and so on mm -hmm. then it's also rational yeah. but yeah, I, I speak about the uh, young people joining extremist groups. Sure, sure. Thank you very much, Rina. Um, yeah, we have like uh, in our work in, in men, in the organization men in Sweden, we have this uh, socio-ecological model, you could say that where, you know, you, you start with the individual and the group and, the, uh, and then the societal level. And you have to be present like in all of them. And you are present. We are present in all of those levels all the time, too. So. I guess that's the way you, you have to work like uh, um, at the same time, in all of that, for sure. So Teresa or Luca, do you have anything, do you want to add something, please? 
Yes, what I can add from our gender sensitive work with boys is, um, uh, and then I'm talking about uh, violence prevention, um, uh, primary prevention when we are in, 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 in schools, for example, when, when there are children. Um, what is very important is uh, to, uh, to see that a lot of young men or boys already experienced, uh, for example, violence and extremism um, in their up, upbringing. Um, and uh, this is uh, what we found is important that uh, we do not put all the burden also of this prevention work on the young people alone but that we also work with the teachers if possible. And Verena already mentioned it, the city of Vienna has a very good and um, I think very, how, how can I say, well advanced youth work that is um, very supportive, but in um, violence prevention uh, and, uh, and also then in the secondary prevention after an incident already happened, uh, for us it is important that we look also at the system because I, I also noticed that a lot of teachers and I work a lot with teachers put, for example, young people a lot in these gender stereotypical boxes. Yeah. And then, I mean, how can we expect that uh, young people uh, or children do it all by themselves. So I think um, it is very important also to to in, involve um, at least from this boys' work and girls' work perspective or gender sensitive work to involve also the other uh, people um, or educators that affect uh, young people. And we also try to do uh, work with parents mm -hmm. because what I also um, experienced when working in in uh, the primary school is. Um, that some parents are also uh, quite interested that their child has this um, very traditional gender identity. Mm. And, uh, and it's also common among teachers in Austria who say, no, the boy should not be so soft. And then I think it is important um, also to, to include uh, them in, in the education as well. And teachers, at least in Austria, tend to... Um, uh, to put the problem, I would say, on the young mm -hmm. persons only. Sure. This is what I uh, or we experience that, yes, you can work with the young men uh, or boys, but um, it, it is not enough. And, and I really uh, support also very, what Verena said. Mm -hmm. Great, Teresa. Thank you very much. Loki, please. Now we can, we can now you're on uh, mute. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I was caught up in listening, so I, I forgot the, the conversation. I, I thought uh, Teresa's point about engaging uh, uh, schools and so on was very interesting and something uh, I would like to hear more about because that's something that was sort of our uh, motivation for writing the report that was to say, can we deliver a document that makes people see the link between gender and extremism? Because I think that has also been, it's a, it's, I would say it's a new thing. I don't know in Austria, but in Denmark, it's a new thing that that's even on the political program, that in the national strategies on the prevention of extremism, gender is even mentioned. Uh, so, so, so it's a new thing. And to see that gender in itself, uh, discourses on gender, cannot just be a topic of uh, gender-based violence, but it's also a topic of extremism is something new. And I think that, uh, that there needs to be a greater awareness about this, uh, this link between gender and extremism. So that's something we can do in the prevention work, find ways to do that. And in doing that, of course, find good ways of doing that. Because the problem I would say about the whole extremist category as pointed out in the beginning, is that if you are, uh, that when, when is the limit? When is it we say that now you have crossed a line and now you have entered you know, an extremist uh, and, you know, we need to do some sort of in intervention. Uh, I always give give the example, uh, you know, that uh, uh, to say that the West uh, is responsible for all the problems in the Middle East. Well, that can be a uh, uh, ordinary, at least in Denmark, left wing attitude, but it's also the founding principle or the founding idea of Al Qaeda. So when when are you in what uh, what space? And the same with the different gender spaces. But that said, we need to have a bigger awareness of that. And then I think that. Uh, in having that, we need to find out uh, what sort of vulnerabilities are, are triggered. And um, in that agenda, we have just last week launched a new project uh, run for three years where we will try to create spaces where we can engage young men in the age 18 to 25. The reason we have chosen the, 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 the 18 to 25 category is that the feedback that we have gotten so far is that uh, 
this this is the group that is sort of disappearing from the radar. There's a lot of uh, emphasis on early prevention prevention uh, among really young men, and then later in life, it's you know it's just a lost cause or whatever, uh, or they they will already be in in, in public spaces where we can monitor. But this category, they uh, they they are they are associating in online spaces where we, we cannot reach them. So how do we reach them? What are their concerns? And how can we provide a space where they can start talking about uh, 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 emotions, transformative ideas of masculinity and gender and so on? And I think what, what we will try to, to, uh, to cater for is exactly this idea that you are being censored, that you, are, that you are sort of have lost your place in society that every time you talk, there is an angry feminist ready to censor you somewhere. Try to see, can we offer a space where we can invite people in and meet them with empathy, not sympathy, because it's a whole nother debate if, they, if, if the sympathy is the right way, but at least an attitude where we try to say, we listen, we want to understand what, what you're saying, and we want to engage you in a dialogue. Because I think, and this is just, I, I don't know, there's no, as far as I know, there's no knowledge, at least from the Danish side, I think that, that that's that's what we are seeing a lot. People who feel that they cannot participate in the debate without be you know having a, a hammer over their finger every time. So try to uh, to to create new spaces where people, uh, especially young men, can participate, can express themselves, can experiment with uh, with having opinions on these issues, and hopefully through that open up um, open up for conversations about uh, well being about gender, about identity, about sexuality, dating, women, and all these things that, of course, not concern every young man, but concern many young men, uh, at least. Um, I saw in the, the, the comment there was uh, someone asking about training influencers. Um, and I think that's a really interesting suggestion. And I think that leads to another, uh, another thing that I've been thinking about. And I, I have no, this is just, I'm just reflecting out loud. I have no conclusion here. The um, uh, role models, the influence of role models. Can you create role models that are gender progressive? Uh, because that's also something we see on the, on especially the the right. I don't know about jihadi circles. I would, uh, I assume it's the same thing. That there are a lot of, you could call them role models. You could call them influencers uh, that exercises and influence through uh, being. Uh, fit, being uh, well read, being all these things. We have our uh, Ben Shapiro's, we have our, in Sweden, you have uh, um, the golden one. Uh, we have our John Peterson's, we have these people who act as role models. Uh, is it possible to do the same thing? Can you create a gender progressive role model? I think that would be a, a very interesting uh, interesting thing to, uh, to experiment with. The problem is, of course, also, always when you are a official body or even an NGO that uh, uh, if you if you come to any group of young people maybe Verena and Teresa you have uh, different experiences and say hello I'm from the state uh, I would like to uh, to talk to you about uh, preventing violence then uh, then no one will listen uh, in my experience at least but uh, maybe there are some some other uh, experiences but I mean mo most most of these people would probably have some sort of anti-authoritarian anti-system ideas already so that's of course also something to work with. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Luke. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there was a good question from uh, from Miguel. Maybe you can you can uh, uh, say something about that. I was just thinking about uh, what you said before, uh, Luke, about the um, why 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 are those uh, young young uh, men attracted to the these organizations and one of those stuff where uh, how do I become a good person? You were, you were asking uh, everybody ask ourselves and uh, the idea of self improvement. So I was thinking. I was thinking that's that's actually um, I mean a, the low a low bar to 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 get somebody engaged is to to know that everybody has it in their system that they want to be better they want to self improve in a way so it's creating spaces creating uh, ways of doing that op open mindedly of course and not uh, po pointing it's 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 a way of attracting people to 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 what we want them to be I guess and 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 also. And also being being in those spaces where we are needed, uh, as Verena said, where where, where are the young people? Where uh, in the in the popular culture and so on and so on. And we, I mean, in Sweden, we do have good examples of of uh, of of that of popular culture and 
and and I would say role models and and influencers who have the gender equality, uh, like being progressive in gender equality. But at the same time, the, the, they are the same people who usually uh, get the other side being really fired up and really angry at them, you know. And so it's like um, I, I guess I guess one one one. Uh, um, or say one uh, um, answer could be that we should be different. Like it should be different people who who are those kind of role models. They look differently, different genders, and yeah, different classes, and you know. So being intersectional about it, I, I think it's it it it's a way of of dealing with that in, in a way. But I want I want to bring Miguel into the conversation. You had this good question that Luke addressed. Please, Miguel, do you want to elaborate? You were looking for a you were looking for a. Uh, for example, successful experience. I don't know if anybody has that, but do you want to say something about that, Miguel? Uh, thank you, Luis. No, it, I'm, I'm involved in one project here in Spain. We are... We are... Are you, now you Sorry, got the translation. Yeah, I have the, yeah, um, the translation. Language, yeah. yeah. Now. Um... And we are de dealing as well with the with the young people and the and the. Um... Yeah. By the way, you can speak Spanish now, and we can get a translation. That would be good, huh? Let's try that. So we we go to the uh, the interpretation Perfecto. on English. As it, tú hablas español, nosotros te encontramos inglés. Perfecto, español. Sí, sí, sí. Est, um, participo en un proyecto que estamos trabajando también con los jóvenes y cómo la, las ideas de la manosfera. De, um, se trasladan a la población joven y, y se um, pues bueno se consolidan estos discursos misóginos y machistas y, um, y hay una parte del proyecto que es de, um, de tra transferencia ¿no? de cómo intentar hacer una de cómo contrarrestar ese tipo de, de discursos y bueno, el, 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 el hacer formaciones a influencers o incluso preparar un proyecto en el que se pueda incluir en nómina a un influencer para que haga contenidos que lleguen a los jóvenes, porque claro, ya hay contenidos a veces de temas de igualdad, pero muy pocos tienen una perspectiva crítica con las masculinidades. Entonces, se me ocurre que puede ser una oportunidad el, el, el dirigirnos a eso, porque yo ya soy mayor para ser youtuber y no, no conozco a gente a mi alrededor que tenga esos, esos, esas habilidades, ¿no? Entonces, es muy importante unir ese tipo de... las habilidades de comunicación para los jóvenes con el conocimiento en temas de, de masculinidades, igualdad y, y transformación de los hombres, ¿no? Y bueno, eh, como veo, suelto aquí la, la reflexión a ver qué os parece. Muchas gracias. Eh, muchas gracias, Miguel. Thank you very much, Miguel. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would say you could be an influencer, Miguel, if you want to. We have to, we have to train a bit with that. <laughs> I think anybody could be, I guess. But I, I, I guess I know where, where you're getting at. Of course, I mean. Uh, so, yeah, please, please your reflections. Uh, so let, let it be a reflection on that. And then you you would say the last words that you want to say that you need to say in this in this panel before we 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 close for this time, please. Anybody in the panel? I have a question also yes. for the other panelists, but also for Verena because I think it is very important. Um, or who are extremists or. Uh, do they label themselves as being extremist or would they say, I'm not an extremist? I think this is very important uh, in how you approach it. So I, I would be interested, for example, in the young people you work with. Strategies. Okay, sorry, Teresa, you were kind of, uh, your connection was bad, but I, I know. Did, did you get the question, Verena? I think I, I yeah. got it. Yeah. I mean, extremism is always a point of, uh, it, it's a question of the standpoint, yeah? When you are in the middle, the extremes are <laughs> on the edge. And if you are on the edge, maybe the extremes are in the middle. So no, no one uh, who is an extremist group thinks that he or she is extreme because he or she thinks or that 
that uh, they, they have the right uh, point of view. And uh, no one would uh, call the helpline and say, oh, okay, this morning uh, I thought maybe I could be an extremist. Who calls us are teachers, parents, the environment who who is uh, worried that si someone might have joined an extremist groups. So, and and I think it's important uh, to always yeah what, what I what I try to to say with with our pre prevention principles also to to reflect uh, one's own point of view of extremism and. And that extremism is not always the other. We all have extreme parts in ourselves. And then I think it's important if you work with people uh, who who are called extremists, but because especially with young people, that's maybe the last word I want to say, I think it's very difficult to call a 13 old year old boy and, and right wing extremist or a jihadi extremist. Mm. I, I mean, uh, the ideas of broaching with young people and they have to try out different things. So if you label them with in the, at a young age, it's ex extremists, I, I think it's really counter, counter protective. Counter -protective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and that's, and that's, the, that's the difficult part if you see, you see it in the intersection, uh, intersection with the uh, anti-racism scope, for example, in Sweden, as I know, that that's that the you are actually, actually they are trying to label young people for uh, as extremists very really young and then and also trying to to get the the, um, the panel like a, a high what do you call it like yeah uh, what you were talking about uh, before how 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 do you work with violence and then and that it's only higher degrees like go it go to jail and make people you know it's harder it's much harder now. Uh, so yeah, there's yeah. also a problem if you label uh, so-called vulnerable groups. I mean, it's important on the one hand, yeah, and it's important to see that young may, men, um, um, they, they use more violence than young women. Or, but uh, if you say, okay, the Chechens, they are all vulnerable because they will all be terrorists. I mean, you also... Uh, the, it, some kind it's a self-fulfilling prophecy no, sometimes no, no. yeah so you have to really be yeah we, be, we have to be careful on that yes for sure thank you very much Verena. On, on that issue for sure thank you so we're gonna have last words for Fation, Teresa and Luke too because we are only three minutes away so please be short if you want to say something before we go anything to add like before we go Thank you very much. Um, I think it is a really interesting and complex topic. And also in Europe, I think it is really important to talk about, um, uh, as Verena said, and as uh, Loke um, and everyone else knows, what do we label as extreme? Um, how do we relate this to other issues of the backlash? For example, Turkey leaving the Istanbul Convention and what are our own uh, blind spots? I think this is also very important. Um, uh, maybe we also have some ideas that others perceive as extreme and are completely convinced they're correct. Um, and how can we really uh, start uh, to, to to create a dialogue? Um, and from our point of view, from the boys' work, it is really important also to look at the adults and their attitudes they have towards boys and young men. Uh, uh, and because I also agree that I, when you label, for example, a ten-year-old as a perpetrator, this is. This is a box. And then I, I, I want to thank all the panelists uh, for the interesting thoughts, also for our um, uh, participants. And I hope we can continue this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Fation, please. Thank you to all of you. It was a pleasure to, to make conversation and to, to hear the other experiences especially from uh, Verena, because uh, we, we are from the civil society, but when we hear the, the other voices and the, the other structures that they are very valuable for us. Also, I, I want to thank you, Luis, for the moderation and the organizing this symposium. 
for me it, it, it was great it was great and i hope that all the participants uh, have learned and not, not learned but have heard something new and from this symposium to, to have ideas how to intervene and how to be more engagement in the in this causa thank you very much Fatjan. thank you Luki, you get you get the last word well yes. i would get the last word but in the panel of course um yeah thanks to everyone uh, who participated and thanks to men engage for organizing i think it is important that we all use men engage uh, as a platform where we can share thoughts globally so uh, so uh, I, I will uh, encourage everyone to uh, to keep do doing that because uh, every time i participate in a in a men engage panel it's a, it's an eye, eye opener because you really get out of the 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 global uh, echo chamber that you can sometimes get involved in uh, or get into whether that is reading too uh, too much uh, american news or just living in a place simply sure to that look and thank you very much for that so yeah thank you very much everybody i, I saw some pe new people coming in maybe too late maybe they got the time wrong i don't know as you see we've been recording this and we will see how we can share it with our network and if even we can put it on the Ubuntu channel for others to see and to learn maybe too. I learned a lot for sure. Uh, I'm thanking very much for your time and the panelists and all, all the other people here. Uh, Men Engage Europe, uh, if you're not part of it, please, uh, you, can, you can join us whenever you want and uh, we, will, we will welcome you. And the next Men Engage Europe session, uh, Ubuntu session will be in June 16th. It's also Wednesday in the month. And uh, it's going to be later than today. It's going to be from from uh, three o'clock to five o'clock. And it's going to be on the masculinity studies in, in academia in the world. We're gonna discuss that, how, how it looks. If you're interested in that, uh, please join us. And yeah, so thank you very much again. Uh, and if you want to see other Ubuntu sessions, you can, you can look at the homepage uh, of Men Engage Global. Uh, there is an app also, and uh, you can, yeah, you can look into the app in the browser uh, on, the, on the screen or on your phone and so on. So please join us for more discussions. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, have a have a good Wednesday. Bye bye. Ciao. Do svidania. <laughs>